Imagine a time when getting to space is affordable, reliable, and efficient. Unlocking a new world of economic opportunities. It's not in some distant future, it's happening now. On this very special Mission Driven, we have our first in-person interview, sitting down with Astra. Together, we explore a new world of possibilities as we talk with a company whose literal mission is to improve life on Earth from space. Chris, you said that your mission is to improve life on Earth from space. How is Astra going to achieve that? We're focused on a whole new generation of companies that are building uh, capabilities that, to better understand our climate, uh, to better help us manage resources here on Earth uh, through observing the planet. We're helping launch this new generation of services into space. What makes Astra such a purpose-driven company? Well, when we talk about our mission of improving life on Earth from space, we focus it by, by trying to create a healthier and more connected planet. And what that means today is taking our customers who've built these satellites that, that provide new ways of, of viewing our environment and getting them to space through our launch services. In the near future, we'll be providing space services directly. It'll allow our customers to go directly and, and deploy software in space, deploy sensors in space, but they're not gonna have to build the entire infrastructure to operate satellites and, and constellations in space. That's really about providing a whole new platform for a whole new set of companies that are emerging in the space economy to, to get to space faster and start providing value here on Earth faster. What does it mean to the world to make space that much more accessible to the public? Space is the ultimate high ground. And the opportunity to put systems and, and, and technology in space means we can observe the planet, predict weather, help farmers grow crops, uh, help understand uh, how to use this precious resource that we have here on the planet. And there are now hundreds of companies that are building incredibly uh, powerful technologies, and they just can't get to space. And the easier we make it for them, the faster we're going to see this market grow. What is Astra doing differently than some of the other space companies out there? Astra is really focused on the needs of our customers. Our focus is really on the Earth and on the applications in Earth orbit that meet the needs of our customers, is getting frequent access to low Earth orbit uh, so that we can create a healthier, more connected planet. What that means is smaller rockets uh, produced in higher volumes uh, that are much more accessible. A lot of other companies are building large rockets and they have they want to put people on rockets, they want to go to other planets and settle them. That's incredibly inspirational, but I think where the market is today is Earth. And I know the goal is really the frequency of launches, right? So getting to eventually these daily launches. What are some of the things that you guys need to do to get there? You're sitting in a rocket factory uh, that uh, is in the process of expanding to produce a rocket a day. In addition to be able to manufacture the rockets at scale, we need to be able to launch them at scale. So we're in the process of setting up spaceports across the country and across the world where we can launch the rockets and get them into space as quickly as we can manufacture them. So you've used Astra's platform to highlight some incredible social issues. Tell us about that and why is it so important to you? Launches are an opportunity to bring a lot of attention to a, a point in time. And this opportunity to do this more frequently uh, is an opportunity to take something that's important to us, to, to our values, to our company, and put it out there. What does it mean for you to be listed on NASDAQ? We're really excited about it because it gives us new access to capital and it gives an opportunity for investors to invest in a company that's building infrastructure in space to improve life on Earth. To open this up to public investors will allow us to, to further serve our customers, further scale the business, and, and further attract the kinds of talent um, and uh, the kinds of companies into our orbit uh, that we'll need to accomplish our mission. Chris, being here, I feel like there's so much to be excited about, but what excites you most about the future of Astra? We're creating a new market here. Uh, I think space has always been the domain of governments and a few very large companies. Uh, and we're creating a place for entrepreneurs, a whole new generation of, of companies uh, to operate and, and to develop new capabilities that will have a huge impact on the planet. Chris, talk to us about the team and how you guys got started. Well, there was a, a small team here in San Francisco working on small rockets, landing rockets, building small rocket engines. And uh, when I met my co-founder, Dr. Adam London, he had a big dream. And uh, you know, we got together and we talked about what it would look like to make a rocket a day. He had the technical folks around him and the vision for how to pull that together. And then we pulled the rest of it around him, the factory, the infrastructure, the funding, and, and now we're, we're going public on NASDAQ. So excited for you to meet him. We have an incredible team of people and we are very close-knit in terms of how well we work together and you know, through the challenges and the issues that we face, we always try and have fun and enjoy ourselves along the way. It's all about 
bringing different minds together. You know, we, we bring an agile approach in from kind of the software background. Uh, we're building our own ERP package, which is really important to how we function from a supply chain perspective. We've got so many different minds coming together on the team to really make this happen. It's been really amazing to watch the team come together and develop the system at the speed that they've done it. I'm definitely most proud of how quickly the team just jumps into gear and gets uh, the rocket built. Everybody comes in here with a baseline of knowledge and I get to work every day with really, really smart people that make science and space more accessible. So your Astro rockets are much smaller than other rockets. How do you guys achieve that? From the very beginning, we've been thinking about how do you make rockets smaller? Because satellites have been getting smaller for years but rockets haven't. If anything, they've been getting bigger. And so we spent a lot of time thinking about how do you scale down all the different parts of a rocket and yet still make it perform well enough to get things into orbit. The other thing is that we really try hard to figure out how to shrink them while still making them inexpensive. And so we make different choices than a lot of big rockets, which are very focused on performance. We're focused on cost and manufacturability and scalability. Adam, what's been the biggest technical challenge in building Astra and also perhaps building some of the rockets? I think uh, a couple challenges. How do you build a really small rocket earlier? You have to shrink a lot of things, so there's a lot of technical development that's required to make all of that work. And the other thing about rockets is they're very unforgiving, and so all the parts have to work together, and it takes a lot of testing and effort to make that happen. Another interesting thing for us is we've tried very hard to keep all of our facilities co-located here in Alameda, and so um, building rockets that are both small enough to be manufactured here as well as the engines and having our test setups working as well has been a big part of our, um, frankly, I think our success, but also one of the hardest things to make it all come together. Adam, what do you see as the future of Astra? I think fundamentally lots and lots of launches and then more and more space services, right? We are very focused on making access to space as easy for our customers as possible. And so first that means launching more frequently and more inexpensively for our customers. Um, and ultimately it means making it easier for them to go from concept to constellation through the space services that we are intending to be offering um, soon. Adam, what would you like to see done with the satellites that you're putting into orbit? We think our customers are going to be able to do so many things with uh, more and more spacecraft in low Earth orbit. Um, and fundamentally we believe that we want to enable our customers to better connect and observe the entire Earth. And as they do that, we think that will end up producing a healthier and more connected planet, which is ultimately our objective. Was there like a drill or something? No. Okay. We're building rockets back here. <laughs> Not stopping the rocket production. <laughs>